So let's begin. Exact Farming is an online service for managing the efficiency of a crop farm. It will help both agronomists and managers. It brings together all you need to know about the state of your farm. You can create an electronic field map, plan the season, keep track of works, see weather data and satellite images, manage field economy, and prevent losses. Now, I'd like to talk about our service's features in more detail. This slide lists key features of Exact Farming. Exact Farming is essentially a unified online platform combining many useful tools, such as an electronic field map, a crop rotation log, weather data, soil test data, satellite imagery, the field works journal, machinery monitoring, cost analysis, plan versus actual reports, and scouting notes and reports. With Exact Farming, you can keep field records in a reliable and secure place, monitor and control the situation on your fields, monitor expenses, plan your season, and analyze information. Based on all this data, this service helps you make decisions. For example, whether certain actions are necessary or not. The field is the basic unit in exact farming. Consider the field as the backbone of the farm. On many farms, the primary accounting unit is the crop, but we use fields, to which crops are then added. This link underlies all further work and the creation of the field map. After adding your fields, weather data and space imagery become available. But to use all these features and get maximum benefit, you'll need to enter some data manually. Exact farming consists of two parts, agricultural and economic, which are interconnected. To access the economic part, you need to fill in the work journal and workflows. Cost analysis tools and plan versus actual reports won't be available otherwise. It's simply impossible. If you don't enter spending data, the system can't calculate or analyze it. Now I'd like to talk about our service's features in detail. A filled account is just like the demo account. To view the demo account, just go to our site and click on View Demo. On the left, there is a navigation panel with tabs, and then the main screen, the dashboard section. It has panels with summary data about the whole farm. In our service, they're called widgets. Below is the Fields tab. It has a list of all your fields and a small map. It has a season selector that lets you edit current seasons, create your own, and switch between them. To the right, we have data buttons. Following many user requests, we made the map multifunctional and gave it its own section. This is what it looks like. I'll talk about its function a bit later. The field is the backbone of the farm in exact farming. We start working with the system by adding the fields. Some of you may have already done so, some not, but it's simple, so I'll go through this quickly. The field is the basic unit everything is attached to. Weather, images, work, photos of events in the fields, crops, expenses. In other words, you can't use the system without adding fields. Once you add all your fields, you'll see their arrangement and approximate area clearly on the map. Add crop rotation, and they'll get pretty colors too. Each crop has its own color you can choose. This electronic map can be printed. Just press the printer icon. Your operating system's standard print window will open. To add crop rotation, click the Structure of Crops widget. The crop rotation table will open. It's not just for coloring fields. The crop rotation log lets you keep records for each field. Which crop was sown in which season in which field? Why do we need this? I have an example from a real farm. Let's take a look. Here's how crop rotation looked before they got exact farming. And here, after. It's much more visual, clear, and convenient, isn't it? It's much easier to work with than papers covered in scribble. Again, this tool will help you plan crop distribution among your fields for every season. Farms with many fields prefer to keep rotation data by crops, not fields. We let you do that too. Just make your selection from the drop-down list. Click the weather widget to see the forecast for the week. It includes temperature, precipitation, humidity, and other parameters. The data is taken from the nearest public weather station. If you don't have a private station connected to the system, if you don't have a private station connected to the system, 
you can see the distance to the nearest public station. If it's too far, think about purchasing your own. Why do we need this? If it's far to the nearest station, the forecast won't be accurate. A few dozen kilometers away, the weather might be totally different. There could be sun at the weather station, but rain over your fields, which could lead to bad decisions about field processing. The treatment will wash off. Connecting a weather station is easy. Enter its ID in the sensors section to add it to the system. A feature will soon be added to connect other weather devices like soil sensors. In the weather journal, you can see maximum, minimum, and average temperatures as well as sums of active temperatures. Below, you can see daily and cumulative rainfall. At the bottom, humidity and air pressure. Agronomists need this data to understand crops' vegetative stage, to decide when each work should be done. All weather data and charts for the past four years are available in the Weather Journal. Change the period with the date filter to see a different chart. Use the Map section to view images and the NDVI. You'll need to turn on the NDVI layer on the map. This is the first element of its multifunctionality. Here, you can see differences in biomass levels in different parts of the field. You can view images for different dates and switch between them. If the image is gray, it means it was cloudy when the picture was taken. See for yourself. Just set the image display to true color. If there's a cloud in the photo, you can't calculate the vegetation index or seed data. We can call an image like this faulty. You'll have to wait until the next one to get data. Nothing can be done about this. It's just the weather. You can view data for all fields or for one. Just select it from the map or from the list in the fields section. Now you can view images of this particular field. Press the back button or switch to the crop rotation layer to see the field card. Here you can see summary data for the field, and you can also add soil analysis or look at a vegetation chart. This is another important tool for agronomists. On the chart, you see the average, minimum, and maximum values for the vegetation index fields with the same crop. The green on the chart indicates the current value of the index for this particular field, so that it's clear whether it's high or low compared to other fields. Click on Settings if you want to see additional charts. Now you can add charts for air temperature, daily and accumulated precipitation, or the work chart for a certain period. You need this to determine the relationship between plant growth and air temperature and daily or accumulated precipitation, as well as to track how completed work affects vegetation. You can also view historic data for the past seven years. If you fill in the crop's rotation log, and keep in mind which crop was sown in which year in this field, you can compare the charts and forecast yields. How to actually use the chart and the NDVI map is a topic for another time. In a nutshell, this feature is required for evaluating the condition of vegetation on your fields. You can get all these features almost immediately without investing much time. The learning curve is very low here. Simply add your fields, indicate their borders, or upload a KML file. That was the service's agricultural side. Now I'd like to talk about the economic side, which is useful for farm owners, directors, and administrators. Obviously, the primary goal for the farming industry, as with any other business, is to make a profit. Therefore, you need to control expenses and try to minimize them. Exact Farming has features that help you do so expense monitoring, and planned versus actual reports. To activate these widgets and get them to display in the financial information you need, you need to add data to the system regularly. Of course, you need to start with a plan. On a farm, a plan means workflows. That is, the complex of seasonal field works in terms of finances, operations, equipment, and other resources. To create a workflow, enter reference data in the following sections. Reference books, workers, and equipment. In reference books, fill in the data about seeds, chemicals, and other consumables. It's just an electronic version of paper reference books. 
data is added once and later just needs to be adjusted. This section is the system's knowledge base. Let's move on to the workers section. Just add data on all your farm's employees. You can later correct it, for example, for new employees or if someone quits. Finally, the equipment section contains data on equipment used on your farm. Some of you might be wondering how long it takes to enter all of this info. Good news! We've added a great feature called Import. It lets you upload this information from your spreadsheets. You'll save a lot of time. Once all of the reference books are filled in and employees and equipment added, we can move on to creating workflows. Go to the Workflows section and add a new workflow. A completed workflow looks like this. Let's open the workflow for corn. It consists of stages and works. You need to add stages first, then you add works to be completed at that stage. Dates, consumables, and other data are shown here. The more detailed your workflow, the more helpful the planned versus actual analysis will be, and the more info there will be in your plan, which you can later compare to the actuals to analyze your performance. You can save the workflow and return to it at any time. For example, if you fill in one stage, then do something else, then continue editing. The duplicate function is also useful. You create the corn workflow and use it as the template for the next one, say for sunflower. Now I'll show you how to create a workflow. I won't make any changes here. I've created a separate account in order to demonstrate how to add a workflow. Click Add Workflow. A window will open. Fill in the name. For example, one, then the crop. We'll say broccoli. Enter the fields we're planning to sow this crop in. Name the stage. Again, one. Add the work. For example, plowing. I won't change dates or output. Our salary will be $300. Let's add equipment and a worker. Click Apply. And the first stage is completed. Now let's save the data. And here's our workflow. Don't forget this important detail. After you've created a workflow, be sure to open the Fields tab and click on Use Workflow so that the data gets into the planned versus actual widget. We press the button, go to the dashboard, and see the $300 we indicated as salary on the planned versus actual widget. Let's recall why it's called planned versus actual. It involves an analysis of plans and actual performance. We've already sorted out the plan. Let's move on to the actual. The actual analysis means the information entered in the works section, where agriculture and finances intersect. This is like an agronomist electronic journal. Here, everything done on a field during a given season is taken into account. Works that have been completed and added to the system are also an element of expense control as they provide data for the consumption of the farm widget. On many farms, agronomists aren't responsible for finances, only for productivity. In that case, they only enter info on completed works, and the financial data is entered by the accountant, economist, or other responsible employee. Why would an agriculturalist want to fill in all this info every day? Workflows and work tools let you experiment on your fields in order to improve productivity. For example, a field can be divided into segments, and one segment can be used for experiments with different chemicals. Later, you'll be able to see how this affects yields. This is also a control feature. It helps you avoid mistakes in carrying out works. Here's an example. There are two agriculturalists working in shifts. The first processed a field and went home. The second came to work and was planning to process it again. But he checked exact farming and saw that the work had already been done. They saved herbicide and averted possible losses since a repeated processing could have killed the crop. How much time does it take to enter the data every day? Here's an example from another farm. It has one skilled agronomist who's responsible for both productivity and finances. The area under cultivation is about 10,000 hectares, and it takes this employee 40 to 50 minutes every day to enter the data. 
If you have two employees, one responsible for agriculture and one responsible for finances, we can divide this time by two, so it takes 20 to 25 minutes per day for each employee. Also, there's another way to save even more time and automate this process. The monitoring system can be integrated to Exact Farming, so the works will be transferred to Exact Farming. As you already know, when you add works, consumables come into play. Where are they stored? And where are they added from? There's a separate section called Warehouse. You might think it repeats the reference books, but it actually doesn't. There are two major differences. Reference books are electronic reference data you use to create workflows and plan expenses. But Warehouse is a separate section used to keep track of inventory and purchases of materials. That is, it reflects your actual spending. An important detail. To make information display correctly in the planned versus actual widget, the names of consumables in reference books and warehouse must match. This applies to the current edition of the system. So now all the data has been entered, and we can move on to the planned versus actual analysis. Again, it's shown on the dashboard, and it looks like this. Let's analyze the performance of winter wheat in 2017. Let's open field 10 to start. We can see that actual expenses were 20% lower than planned. Let's take a closer look at where exactly we managed to save money. Let's expand the list of all our actions. We can see the actual cost of drying was 17% higher than planned. Let's look at the reasons for it. As we see, compensation was almost $30 higher than planned. Perhaps we didn't take into account the situation in the labor market or give a bonus to an employee. Let's continue. Cultivation costs were 42% higher than expected. Let's look at this in detail. We spent almost $20,000 more on fuel than we planned. There might be a few reasons. We may not have considered routine price increases on fuel, and it got pricier. Or it may have been due to faulty engines consuming more fuel. But, if the price is exactly the same and the equipment is in good condition, but consumption is much higher than planned, maybe your employees stole fuel from the tank. Let's get back to the workflows and works sections. We can check how much fuel we planned for this operation. We may have entered less than needed by mistake, and then we can see how much was actually used. If there was no mistake and the consumption was much higher, the fuel might have been stolen. Thus, exact farming lets you track even these kinds of things without extra devices or sensors. Now, let's go to field 7. Actual spending was higher than planned. Let's try to find out why. If we expand the operations list, we'll see there was excess spending in a number of them. Cultivation is our biggest concern here. We spent 8 times more than planned. We can see that the reason was fuel. How did this happen? The employee couldn't have stolen so much fuel. If we go back to workflows and works, we are likely to see an error, a human factor. The economist simply typed an extra zero when he was filling in the data. We've looked at the actual versus plan tool. Now let's move on to consumption of the farm to see detailed spending data. The consumption widget displays all the farm spending for the season or other period. You can also view data for a particular field. For example, let's open field one. You can view all of the data on spending in monetary terms or switch to percentages and see which categories are the most expensive. We can see that solid fertilizers account for almost half of the total sum. We expand the list and see that Azovska is the most expensive item. Maybe this means you need to analyze, to talk to the agronomist about how to decrease the consumption of this fertilizer next season. Maybe it can be replaced with a cheaper substitute. Or maybe we can get a more expensive fertilizer with much lower consumption so that the total cost decreases. And the last thing I'd like to show you here is how to look at consumption per hectare and product cost per hectare. This can help you evaluate the profitability of cultivating a given crop. There's one more important feature I'd like to address. Notes. It's located here and looks like this. This tool allows you to monitor and promptly respond to various situations in the fields, or just leave messages for other employees or the owner. Here we can see how harvesting is progressing. This looks like a note for the owner to inform him that harvesting is underway in that field. As you can see, the note is attached to a specific field, 
so it's easy to see where exactly something is happening. Now let's open this note, a problem region. Here we see small areas of weeds, thistle. Let's open this note, caterpillars. Note that it's marked with a blue flag. You can create such notes if you install the mobile app. We'll talk about that in a moment. The note is added and attached to your location. So if you go scouting with your phone and you see a problem, you can take a photo and add a note. Coordinates are added automatically. This is very convenient, particularly if your fields are large. You don't need to spend time driving around the fields and looking for the problem area. It's very easy to see where something happened. Now, the mobile app. Currently, it allows you to view the electronic field map, the list of maps, detailed data on each field, and satellite images for different dates. Remember, the photo may be gray because of clouds. Turn on the true color layer to see for yourself. And of course, the app lets you add and edit notes. That was the iPad version of the app. If you have questions, you can always contact our support team. Just click on the question mark in the upper right-hand corner. There, you'll see the contact form. Fill it in to get a prompt reply from me or my colleagues. That's one more advantage of exact farming. Thank you for watching.